this is a pectoral region we have the important landmark in pectoral region this is a clavicle this is the suprasternal notch after running here 2 cm below you will feel a transverse ridge which is called a sternal angle then the middle is composed of the body of the sternum which ends in xiphoid process this corresponds to 6th costal cartilage the sternal angle corresponds to 2nd costal cartilage the important skin marking here is the nipple and the areola which are well developed in females this is the axilla this is anterior axillary fold so the important identification point in the skin of the pectoral region is the nipple and the areola reflecting the skin we have the subcutaneous superficial fascia which has less amount of fat in the case of male in the females it is here where the mammary gland will be present so for convenience we leave the nipple and areola attached to the first muscle of the pectoral region that is pectoralis major so this muscle you know arises from clavicle sternum second to sixth costal cartilages and aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle of the abdomen so the clavicular head is this arising from the anterior surface of the medial half of the clavicle the sternal head arises from the one half of the sternum's anterior surface if this is a left muscle means it arises from the left half of the anterior surface of the sternum these are the coastal heads which arise from the second to sixth costal cartilages so second third four five six below that it arises from the aponeurosis covering the external oblique muscle of the abdomen so aponeurotic origin costal origin sternal origin and clavicular origin after arising the fibers will run upwards and laterally towards the humerus the bone of the arm as they approach the attachment point they form two lamina anterior lamina posterior lamina anterior lamina formed by clavicular head posterior lamina formed by sternocostal head the anterior lamina is inserted on the lateral lip of the bicipital groove this is the humerus with greater tuberosity and lesser tuberosity this is the intertubercular sulcus which has got a medial lip and lateral lip third one. so the superficial lamina formed by the clavicular head is inserted in the lateral lip of the bicipital groove the deep lamina which is formed by the sternocostal fibers is split into two the upper sternocostal fibers follow the clavicular head and they are inserted in the lateral lip of bicipital groove whereas the lower sternocostal fibers along with the oblique fibers fibers arising from external oblique aponeurosis will twist so that the lower fibers will come to upper part and upper fibers will go to lower part these are the upper fibers coming to lower part the lower fibers will twist and go to the upper part you can see the lower fibers going to the upper part of bicipital groove these are the upper fibers coming to the lower part of the bicipital groove so it gets twisted so lower fibers of the lower sternocostal origin goes to the upper end of the lateral lip of bicipital groove the upper fibers come down to the lower end of the lateral lip of the bicipital groove this twisted lower fibers of the pectoralis major responsible for forming the anterior axillary fold this is supplied by medial pectoral nerve which pierces through pectoralis minor and lateral pectoral nerve which comes through lateral side of the pectoralis minor so this is the first muscle of the pectoral region the next muscle is pectoralis minor this is a triangular muscle base directed below apex directed above it arises by three slips these are the three slips of origin first slip second third slip they arise from the anterior surface of the ribs close to the costochondral junction this is a costum this is a cartilage cartilage is also called as chondrum the rib is also called as costum so at the junction of costochondral junction close to it from the anterior surface of third fourth and fifth rib it arises with three fleshy slips fibers run upwards and laterally and is inserted on the medial border and upper surface of the coracoid process of the scapula i'll show you on the other side the insertion point correctly so this is left side scapula this is a coracoid process of scapula this is the tip at the medial border upper surface lateral border and lower surface so this muscle is inserted on the medial border and upper surface of the coracoid process of the scapula as you can see 
it is supplied by medial pectoral nerve which pierces through it and lateral pectoral nerve which pierces on the lateral side of this muscle when this muscle is acting from below it pulls the scapula down causing depression of shoulder when it acts from above it elevates the rib helping in inspiration now we move to that side to see the attachment point of the coracoid I mean, uh, pectoralis minor muscle the minor major is removed and you can see the coracoid process my finger is now touching the coracoid process you can see the insertion point of pectoralis minor at the coracoid process medial margin and upper surface of the tip of the coracoid process so this is the pectoralis minor muscle and this is the major muscle next we move on to the subclavius muscle okay and this is cephalic vein so once i remove the pectoralis major you can see a thick fascia here stretching between pectoralis minor and the clavicle this is the clavipectoral fascia okay laterally it will extend into the axilla this encloses pectoralis minor muscle and beneath the clavicle there is another muscle called subclavius it is pierced by lateral pectoral nerve and thoracoacromial artery on the lateral side of pectoralis minor it is also pierced by a vein placed between pectoralis major muscle and deltoid called a cephalic vein this also pierces the clavipectoral fascia but medial to the pectoralis minor to drain into the axillary vein besides these three structures that is lateral pectoral nerve thoracoacromial artery and cephalic vein it is also pierced by lymphatics which will pass from the external anterior surface of the chest wall to go and drain into the lymph nodes which are placed around the pectoralis minor muscle so this pectoralis minor as you can see we will divide the artery lying here that's axillary artery into a first part second part and third part first part lies medial to the muscle second part lies deep to the muscle third part lies lateral to the muscle so this is otherwise called as a key muscle of the pectoral region okay specimen this is to show you the subclavius muscle this is a clavicle as you can see this is a cut portion of the manubrium sternum and this is the first costal cartilage and this is the first rib that is removed okay now below the clavicle here you can see the subclavius muscle blending with the under surface of the middle third of the clavicle so it arises from the first costal cartilage this is the cut portion of the first costal cartilage which is removed from the first rib so it arises from the first costal cartilage runs and is inserted on the subclavian groove on the under surface of the middle third of the clavicle this is actually the left clavicle beneath that you can see a deep groove on the inferior surface this groove is called a subclavian groove so this is the subclavius muscle inserted arising from the first costal cartilage on the under surface of the subclavian groove in the middle third of the clavicle this is supplied by nerve to subclavius a branch from the herbs point of the brachial plexus its main action is to stabilize the clavicle during various movements of the shoulder okay this is subclavius muscles so we have three three muscles pectoralis major this is pectoralis minor cut portion and this is subclavius